Well, welcome to the Huskies Hockey Insider Podcast for this week. Uh, I'm very happy to be joined by, I'm going to say it, NCHC uh, record holder, uh, Nick Perbix. Nick, uh, thanks for taking some time here this week. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, you know, let's talk about that, that big, uh, that big game for you on Friday, you know, six points, uh, that, that I don't care who you're playing against. Uh, that's a big, big night at the rink. Uh, that'd feel pretty good. Yeah, no, I mean, it was a weird night. It was kind of one of those where everything just fell, fell, fell in the right. I mean, I got all the bounces. That's for sure. I mean, like, I think what capped it off was, it was my fourth or fifth assist, but it was to my, Micah's shorthanded goal. I made a five feet, five foot pass below the goal line. And he just skates it all the way down and scores. And I mean, it's just it look, on the score sheet. It's a first assist, but that's that's just kind of kind of the night I was having. Well, it, it makes up for some of those right early on in the season, maybe where you, where you hit a guy in a back door and it skips a stick or something, yeah. and, and you guys don't convert, right? I know. I, I was. I think the whole month of November, I didn't have a point, and so I guess. I guess I'm making up for it now. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually, I was, I was looking this up because I, I, I was like, boy, Nick's been pretty hot here. And so I, I looked up the numbers, 15 points in your last six games. So I think you're making up for lost time here. Uh, <laughs> but, but you've, you know, besides the bounces, I mean, you know, do, do you feel you're always trying to make adjustments, Nick and stuff, uh, you know, are, are there some things, I guess, that, where you feel like, Hey, I've been a little bit better here or a little bit better there, maybe here in the last you know, last several games or um, I think it I, I kind of touched on it after the game Friday, actually, but I mean mentally, men, I think mentally has been a lot of it too, because towards the beginning of the year, I, I wouldn't say forcing, but I'm not sure how else I'd put it. I, I like and not that I wanted to get points for the sake, the sake of individual points, but kind of want to like our the unit I was on power play kind of was, was pretty dry in all of November too. And so kind of being seen as kind of running that power play, I kind of put it upon myself, like, okay, I need to find a way to get things going, blah, blah, blah. I was kind of more results driven rather than just kind of playing hockey, making the simple play. Things will work out. I think that's kind of where I'm at now. Just if, if a play doesn't work out, you know what, move on, whatever. I mean, you can't control the past. Yeah. Right. You know, so, yeah. I mean, sometimes you, you, you almost got to get out of your own way. Right. I mean, you, you almost got to stop overthinking things sometimes. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, the, the, the power play has, has certainly been a, a real strength for this team though. Uh, you know, maybe there was a stretch there in November, but you know, overall, I, whatever it is, I think it's 38% or something like, I mean, that's an astounding <laughs> number when you were in high school. I mean, with, you know, any of those teams Elk river, I mean, do you remember having a good, as good a power play as you guys have had? Uh, well, I mean, I was pretty fortunate to play on a really good high school team. I think from my sophomore year to my senior year, we had anywhere from five to seven D- D1 guys. And that changed throughout the time. So we had some pretty good power plays, but I mean, 38% is pretty it's, it's quite a lot. We weren't quite expecting that high uh, going into the end of the year, at least when well being at this point. You know, it's part of that. You know, a lot has you know, and I'm I'm guilty of this too. I mean, but a lot has been made about just how, how many upperclassmen are out on this team. You know, and and to have that many guys coming back. I mean, is that, is that a big part of you think the success? I guess on the power play. I, I actually think that's a huge part. I mean, we've basically had these two power play units this is the second year in a row that we've had them and so i mean that's huge just the chemistry we, we've had a year and a half to practice with them like we kind of know where each other are we got a great feel i know we can switch spots but but everyone's kind of played with each other you know we know how we play and so yeah no i think a mix of it being older and just like the chemistry of playing together for for such a long time yeah, well, I mean, just uh, you know, talk talk a little bit about this. I mean, you know, just just uh, having this group stay together, yourself included. Uh, you know, I mean, you got draft picks and everything else. I mean, a lot of teams lose guys early on. I mean, to have this group back, uh, you know, this this many seniors and and fifth year guys, uh, I I would imagine there there's kind of like a different feeling almost in the, in this locker room just because of the familiarity with for you guys, huh? Yeah, no, I mean, there's definitely a I mean, it's different, but not much can change from, or not a ton has changed from year to year. Like, I think the big difference is, I mean, we know how close we came last year and I mean, we all have the same goal. We want, we want to win, we want, want to win that final game. And so, uh, 
so we kind of know we know what it takes to get there and now we, we got to work that much harder to kind of get over that hump uh you know you know uh, an area where i think you know the because the power play has been so successful, I don't think people are necessarily giving you guys enough uh, credit uh, on the penalty kill. I, you know, you guys are almost 88% on the penalty kill and you're leading the nation in shorthanded goals. Uh, you know, uh, what, what have been some big things there for you guys, uh, you know, just killing penalties this year. And, and you guys are on a roll with that as well. Um, I, I mean, kind of our identity we like to have is just our work. Our work is going to beat your work. So when it comes to like just a little puck battle, like we, we got to win it. We're, we're desperate to win it. And so, uh, and then kind of with the shorthand part, we're not just an automatic throw it down the ice. If, if there's time and space, the forwards especially aren't afraid to, to skate it up and, and make a play. Well, speaking of which, I mean, you, you guys uh, scored down two players. You don't see that very often. Talk a little bit about that goal and, and how that kind of came about. That was actually kind of funny because, so we were killing five on four before it, obviously. And, and Shaker looked at me, Dave Shayak. He goes, oh, Purge, we don't need you jumping up in the play, trying to create an odd man, odd man rush right now. I'm like, okay, okay. And then obviously that play happened. I get back to the bench and go, sorry, Shick. And he goes, uh, yeah, I mean, that one's a tough one to pass up. So, <laughs> so yeah, I guess I wasn't listening to his orders, but it worked. Luckily, it worked out. You know, how, how much fun, I guess, has just been watching, you know, Kevin Fitzgerald and, and Micah Miller, you know, they really kind of up front anyways are, are, are a couple of leaders for you guys uh, on the on the kill. What what are those, what's been like watching those two guys uh, kill penalties this year? I mean, it's fun. I just, I love when we win the face off and uh, we throw it down the ice, like we clear it and Micah's well over half the time winning the race for the puck, even though the D has a, 10, 20 foot head start on him. I mean, he's just, he's incredible to watch. They both are. How about, uh, a lot of really good skaters on this team. It, 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 you know, if you're, you're talking like line, line everybody up on, on the red line and, and go to the other end and to the other red line. Is, is Micah, is, does Micah win that race over everybody else or, or who else would be? I, right I think, there? I think straight line Micah has it straight line yeah for sure i'd say micah i mean but like shiftiness and speed that kind of combination henches is he's crazy and i mean we have a lot like you said walker's a great skater i don't think josh luke gets enough credit for how good of a skater he is and yeah i mean I, i'm sure there are plenty more that i could name off too <laughs> let's uh let's talk about the you know just the other defensemen uh you know you, you, I'll, I'll just kind of throw everybody's name out there and you just uh tell me what kind of comes to mind when you think of each one of these guys as, as players out there how you all right with that nick or yeah okay spencer meyer leader i mean that's for sure obviously he's a junior captain but but he's also that perfect balance of having fun in the locker room on and off the ice just kind of as a team getting together and then when things kind of get scrambling on the bench, he's definitely someone who's, who's yelling the right things, not yelling, but just kind of keeping everyone in the right mindset. And that's good. And then on top of that, he's a great player too. I mean, he leads us on the ice too. And so, yeah, no, definitely, definitely that. Uh, Seamus Donahue. I think just kind of like a, a calm, a cal I mean, especially for me, I, like we've been playing together recently, kind of a calming presence security blanket which i love because obviously i'm not afraid to jump up in the play so there are numerous times and he's got to kind of save my butt during the game taking the two-on-one and then not to take away any of that i mean he's got great offensive ability too he, he shows it here and there too and uh so yeah no i mean he, he can kind of do it all uh you know and i you know pound for pound uh he he might be as tough a guy uh, as you guys have on defense too yeah, kind of looking around he just like when he hits a guy, he just throws his whole body at him. He doesn't hold anything back. <laughs> uh, 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 Brendan Bushy, steady. I mean, he's. I don't. I know he gets a lot of kill time too, and he, he definitely deserves it. He's a he's a tough guy to play against so in practice. He's definitely a tough guy to play against, and so I mean, steady, just re really good defender. Uh, you, you ever uh, get, kind of bounce up next to him and you know have him like bang you into the boards? I, I'm trying. To, there's a he when he comes at you. There's a lot coming at you. He's a big oh. guy. Oh yeah, no. I mean, if yeah, if he's got the intent to hit you, you're probably not going to win that battle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jack Pierre. <laughs> He'll play hockey for a long time. For that. 
Yeah, I mean, he his skill set. I mean, like we kind of forget all the time that he's still eighteen, and he's. I mean, he looks like a regular out there at this point, and so. I mean, he's just, he's honestly impressive to play hockey for a long time, mm-hmm. both. I mean, defensively and offensively. Uh, Josh Lickey. underrated. Yeah, I mean, he's so good too. The amount of times he just kind of like how I brought up earlier his skating. He can just skate a puck out of pressure, skate it as a break, just break it out himself. That I don't think. Uh, I guess I don't look at how, who gets credit for what online or whatever. We try not to pay attention to that, but I think he should definitely get more from what I from what I see. And so I mean, he's he's very very good, and he'll he'll play hockey he'll play hockey for a while, and he'll be huge for our team in the future. Yeah, I, and that was a guy that, you know, he wasn't quite, you know, with all the guys he had coming back, he wasn't quite sure how much he was going to play, but he certainly played his way into a lot of playing time, isn't he? Oh, yeah, I mean, he deserves every bit of it, too. I mean, he's – he'll outwork anyone. I mean, obviously, he's not the biggest guy ever, but he's not afraid of anyone. He'll outwork him. He'll go right through the hands or whatever he needs to do to get the puck. And, and oh, yeah, he's, he's very, very good. Uh, Luke J. Cox. I mean, just kind of what our – team likes to identify like our team identity kind of is like the kind of player he is too or like what we want to be i should say just a hard nose nobody ever wants to play against some kind of guy <laughs> That's for sure. uh brady zemer i think those two kind of go hand in hand honestly i mean he he like like sheamus if he hits you he's throwing his whole body at you and, and it's gonna hurt <laughs> and so i mean to kind of go along with that and and Luke J- and Coxie, he, uh, they they defend very hard, and they're not fun to play against at all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Brady and Sheamus, I, I think they, you know, the, you get the impression that they they would fight you over whatever a piece of tape on the uh, on the ice. I mean, the, the, they seem like when they're out there, they're competing. Yeah, I, and I love that though. I mean, that's so good. I mean, even in practice, we're a super competitive team, and. I mean, there are team there there are little little scuffles on the ice, but that's not a bad thing. I mean, we're all we're all guys. We're all men. We'll nothing. None of it's personal. And so, yeah, no, there definitely are some, and, and they're uh, they're not afraid to get into it a little bit. But I mean, none of it's personal. We all move on pretty quickly. Uh, Andre Treball. he's super, super calm with the puck. Actually, I mean, just I I played with him for a game or two this year. Actually, when Purdy was out, and uh, I mean, he jumped right in. And, I mean, there was, he didn't, I didn't skip a beat. He didn't skip a beat at all. And I think I actually was talking to Lars. I don't think he let up a goal for like the first two months. And so, I mean, he, obviously that speaks to his defending too. And so, uh, I mean, yeah, no, he's just really calm, really good. I mean, he's just steady. Uh, he, he seems like a guy that, uh, you know, everybody wants to take, you know, steps and some guys take big steps and, you know, over the course of their career and in a particular season, Seems like he's a guy who's taken a big step forward this season. Would you agree with that, Nick? Or yeah, yeah, no. I mean, kind of like that. I feel like he's the guy where you can put in really any situation, and uh, and he's proven that this year. Obviously, he's he's playing where he is now, and he was playing with me, and so uh, I mean, yeah, no, he he can. I mean, that's a great trait to have too. Being able to play play in any situation makes things easy for the coach. Uh, it, it was interesting when I was talking with him earlier this season, uh, he, he was saying that, uh, you know, obviously he, he and David Rennick, one's from the Czech Republic, one's, uh, one's from Slovakia, but the, their language is a little bit similar. So they actually can speak to each other. You, 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 are there times you're like, what the heck are you guys talking about in the locker room with those guys yeah. or not? I mean, a lot of times they're like before, after practice, they'll be in the lounge speaking their language and I'll just sit there. I'll, just, I'll hear it, figure out that obviously it's not English and I'll just sit and look at them. Until they both realize that they're they're talking in that and that I'm like no that's not we shouldn't do that here I want to hear what you're saying because if you're talking about me I want to hear it <laughs> so, I mean I just, I love giving people a hard time especially about stuff like that that's just completely harmless and so no that, that's kind of the fun I like to have those are two guys that uh, you know you guys have a lot of guys like this but I mean those are two guys that uh, I, I I don't know if I've ever seen those guys like really in a down mood I mean they they seem like they're very upbeat people is that true uh, Nick you know them a lot better yeah. Than I. yeah no I mean Davey's all like I can't think of a time when I've like first seen Davey just like turn the corner and you see him and he doesn't have the biggest smile on his face and I mean I mean our whole my whole four years here too and so 
I mean, yeah, no, they both definitely are. They're smiling. They're, they're, they're in a good mood. And so, yeah, no, that's very true. Uh, I, I was down at Hockey Day Minnesota for, for a little bit, uh, for a couple of days. I uh, was talking with a number of people from Minnesota State Bank, Cato. One of the people I talked with was Kelsey King, who's from Elk River. And uh, uh, somebody that, that you know, she actually uh, – she was uh, talking about how she was actually on uh, your brother Jack's uh, Pee Wee teams, kind of growing up on occasion. What, what, what do you remember? I guess a little bit about that. Yeah, no, I remember. I remember that year actually. Cause, I mean, obviously, I went to a decent amount of their games. I, I thought she fit fit in pretty well with their team. I mean, that. Yeah, so when I was a Pee, there was hitting, but yeah, no, by then there were there wasn't any hitting, and so yeah, no, I mean, I thought she fit in pretty well. What, what, what uh, she was fun to talk to, but uh, you know, you you've known her for a long time. Uh, you know, what, what, what's her personality like? A little bit. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, she's like like you said, my brother's age, so she's more a little bit more his her, or his friend. But uh, I mean, she's competitive. That's for sure. I feel like everyone has to have that kind of drive to get to the level that we're at now, or that the level of compete. So yeah, no, she's definitely competitive. Doesn't like to. Doesn't like to lose. I'll, I'll say that. Uh, she was talking about uh, how different your personality and your brother Jack's are. Uh, you know, talk, talk a little bit about the, the yin and the yang between you and your brother. Um, I mean, he. There aren't many people that can get under my skin, and, <laughs> and he, he he definitely he definitely knows how to do that. And uh, I mean, he always has. He, I feel like that's kind of like what he likes to do. And uh, I mean, he's a little brother. He's got, he's got to be able to do that. But, uh, but no, I mean, he's always kind of been the more little fiery, little fiery guy. And I, I'm just kind of calm laid back. I mean, he's definitely more my dad and I'm definitely more my mom. <laughs> so, him and my dad kind of butt heads at times too. And me and my mom just sit back and laugh and, and no, I mean, obviously I love Jack. He's, I mean, I don't like him when he, when he wears the, when he wears his Jersey, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I love him. I wouldn't wouldn't change anything. That's for sure. Uh, yeah. Well, for people who don't know, Jack plays for the University of Minnesota. So you guys uh, played against each other. Uh, what, what's that experience like playing playing against your brother? Uh, I, I mean, I think it's pretty fun. Obviously, the way it ended this year, uh, he uh, he didn't bring it up at Christmas. He didn't say anything about it. And so, I mean, like I said, I'm I'm calm, but I'm super competitive and. And about, about stuff like that, I, I don't like to think about too often. But uh, obviously, I can laugh about it now. But, um, I mean, actually, the first time we played was my sophomore year, his freshman year. Mm-hmm. And we all, my whole family thought it would be this really cool, like, playing each other moment. And turns out my parents just ended up hating it because they realized someone's got to lose. Someone's going to be super upset, this and that. And so they're, they weren't dreading it going into this year but they, they weren't uh like the super excited just going to watch going to watch their kids kind of mood i guess going to the game yeah and, and i know i i think i i heard that your, your mom was kind of she would kind of split what she was wearing like half of her was like uh st cloud state stuff the other half was was yeah. gopher stuff right yeah i think she wore so when we were at the u she wore like a gopher jersey but like a st cloud state scarf and hat and kind of flip-flopped that when we were at St. Cloud. And so, I, I mean, she definitely doesn't want to upset one of her kids. So she's got to wear both. <laughs> uh, now your dad played college hockey uh, at, at Gustavus. Did, did he coach you, you know, a lot go- growing up or, or was it like uh, growing up with a dad who would play college hockey? You no, know, he, he definitely helped me a lot. I mean, he coached me when I was super young, like mites kind of when kind of it's mostly parents. Once it, uh, once it got to like squirts and up, Elk River mostly had non-parent coaches. And so uh so he didn't coach me much after that, but no, he he coached me like he was actually my coach in mites. And then uh I mean he would I would I would always go go to him, ask for help, ask for what he thought, this and that. And so uh so yeah, no, he's definitely helped a lot. Different father sons, you know. It- you know, work this differently, you know, I mean, and, and have different dynamics with it. Uh, do, do you talk a lot, you know, hockey, you know, after a game, will you talk with your dad, I guess, about hockey or do you guys just totally get away from talking hockey after a game? Um, I mean, after a game, you, you bring it up, you bring up plays, this and that here and there. But that's, for the most part, that's kind of all we talk about hockey. I mean, 
obviously there's news here and there about what's going on, but I mean, we try to avoid it as much because it's kind of our lives now. Obviously, uh, it's cool, but, but yeah, no hockey's like we talk about that with everyone else too. So they kind of know him and my mom kind of know, like talk about golf, talk about family, this, that. And so uh, the big news, obviously, you know, with you is this, uh, Actually, I now I should ask you this uh, to, to start with. Do you, you know? I take it you had a. Did you already have a passport in place, or did you have to go out and run out and get a passport because you're heading off to the Olympics? Uh, or, wow. or or how did that go? Well, I've had a passport for a while. My mom, we actually have family from out of the country, so my mom always wanted me to have one of those ready just in case we we had an opportunity to go see them or this whatever whatever the need may be. And so no, I've had a passport I've had a passport for a while, and luckily, luckily so. And, and your mom's originally from, is it South America? I'm trying to remember. My, my grandma's from Colombia. Okay. There so we my go. mom was always in America, but yeah, well, my grandma's from Colombia. Okay. There we go. Uh, but, you know, talk a little bit about, uh, you know, just uh, hearing, hearing the news. Uh, and, and it sounded like Co- Coach Larson was the one who kind of broke it, broke the news that uh, you're named to the Olympic team. Uh, what, what, what was that like and how'd you find out? It's kind of funny, actually. I mean, I was out to eat with about, eight to 10 of the guys and I got a call or I get a text from Lars. And so like, Hey, do you got a minute in private? So then, I mean, he hadn't said anything to me leading up to that. And I'm like, Oh, Oh God. Like right away. I'm like, what, what did I do? I didn't, I don't think I did anything. <laughs> and then I was like, yeah, I'm good. Then he called me and then he told me the news and, and he, he ended it with like, Hey, now it's got to stay quiet. Like don't tell the guys yet because whatever whatever the reason was and i'm like oh god how am i gonna go back and eat and <laughs> not completely blow up and somehow hold in my emotions to where they won't find out this life-changing news happened so somehow i was able to able to do that get back call my parents and uh i mean they, they were freaking out super happy and, and luckily i uh we got to tell him the next morning, so I didn't have to keep it from him for too long. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough one to hold in uh, yeah. when you get something like that going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, what what kind of did you know? You guys actually, uh, coach was talking about this, uh, you know, today in the in, in the press conference. But uh, you guys are actually leaving Sunday morning or whenever. I guess what kind of details? I guess do you do you know or, or what have you heard about? You know what your itinerary is and that sort of thing. Honestly, I should probably probably look a little more into it. I just know we're leaving Sunday morning. <laughs> I haven't packed anything. I think they said they were going to send out a packing list, but I haven't seen it. So I got to uh, got to go look for that just in case I need to go get something that I don't already have. Yeah, is you know, is there an element, I guess, of, of the you know, of this whole thing that uh, you know you're, you're looking forward to the most, I guess, or or uh, you know, what, what's it like, I guess, just having this? At, <laughs> I I can't even imagine, I guess, the anticipation uh, for for you. What's that? What's that like? Honestly, it's kind of crazy. Like with COVID going on, I'm just hoping everything goes as planned. But uh, I mean, that's just the world we live in, and uh, and I, I don't really know what to expect when I'm over there. I haven't heard much about that especially with the new covid stuff in a normal year i'd try to go see as many events as possible but uh but yeah no i'm just kind of going in with no expectations just going to kind of go with the flow and taking as much of it as i can uh it, w- when you're watching the the winter olympics obviously you'll watch hockey a lot and stuff but uh you, you, any other sports i guess uh in, in the olympics that you enjoy watching uh, on the winter side that, that really kind of oh my gosh i gotta watch this it's coming on um i mean the speed skating so i like the short track speed skating when they're just flying around <laughs> I, I don't i actually don't even know what it's called but whenever i see it on it's like that cross-country skiing mixed with sniping yeah i think it's i think it's biathlon i want to say it's like biathlon i know what you're talking about yes yeah no i, I always think that's cool because I'm not a, not a huge off ice cardio guy, and so going going from just breathing that hard and then shooting a gun in a tiny a tiny uh, at a tiny target, it's got to be so hard. So I mean, that's just kind of something that I would say I'd like to try, but like I said, I'm not a huge off ice cardio guy, so so I don't know if I'll be doing that one. Not, no, your brother's a big outdoors, but I mean, will, you know, will you go out hunting on occasion with your brother or, or not? I mean, uh, I, actually, we went hunting over uh, over Christmas break. 
pheasant hunting. I hadn't, I hadn't been before. So, I mean, it was a lot of fun. That's, that's my kind of hunting. So, I mean, the reason why I don't really hunt that much is, well, my dad's not super into it too. Everyone else on my dad's side is though. But uh, my first time hunting, I was about 12, 12, yeah, about 12 years old. And we sat in the stand for two, like all day Saturday, all day Sunday. And we saw one squirrel and two birds the whole time. <laughs> and I'm like, are you kidding? This is what hunting is. I'm never doing this again. And so at least with pheasant hunting, I was able to talk. I was able to walk around and, and obviously we shot some birds too. I mean, it was so bad at afternoon on Sunday, my dad, like we kind of had the joke of it's brown, it's down, <laughs> it, but it turned into, if anything moves, we're shooting it. And so, <laughs> and so, uh, I still didn't get to shoot. And so, I mean, yeah, I haven't been deer hunting since then. With the, with pheasant hunting then, will you guys go out with it? Did you guys go out with the dog then? Or, I mean, or oh, yeah. there's actually a big group. Like my uncle has a dog. He has a couple of his friends have a dog. We have a dog that we bring. So we probably have about six, seven dogs for about 10, 11 people. So it's, it's pretty good. Yeah, they do. They do a pretty good job. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, uh, this weekend, uh, you know, North Dakota, obviously, uh, you know, it's, uh, it always feels like a massive weekend when you guys are, are, are playing them. Uh, uh, you know, what, what's it like? Uh, describe for people, I guess, uh, you know, who aren't ever going to have that experience, what, what it's like playing up uh, in, in that, in Ralph Engelstead Arena. What's that experience like? I mean, I I think it's outside of the herd, one of the most fun places to play in college hockey. I mean, when you get there on Thursday, you kind of go walk around the rink after Friday morning before the game, you walk around the rink and you see just how, I mean, it's, I'd say it's even as far as just like how nice it is, it's probably even better than the, than the X as far as comparing ranks. It's mm-hmm. just, I mean, it's incredible. And then the fans, they'll, they'll get in your ear, but I, I kind of like that. I kind of like getting yelled at and just kind of laughing at the things that they say. And, and I mean, before the game, you walk out, if you walk out to the bench, their student section is completely full over an hour before the game. So, I mean, they take it pretty seriously up there, which, which is fun. Uh, yeah, I, I was going to say, is, is there anything more fun, I guess, than, uh, you know, getting 11,000 people to just be quiet, right? You guys score a goal or something. I mean, that, that's that got to be a, a heck of a moment. Yeah. Yeah, no. Uh, I mean, I think our my freshman year, we, we went up there and kind of put a little beating on them the first night, like 4 5 one. And, yeah, no, it was, it was nice to see those fans towards the last few minutes of the game not really say much anymore because they, they knew. And hopefully we can do that this weekend. Obviously, it's a tall task, but uh, but that would be a lot of fun. Well, Nick, uh, just thanks so much, uh, you know, again, for taking some time. Uh, you're always re- really generous with your time uh, with me, and I always appreciate it. And I just want to say that. And I also, if I don't get a chance to talk to you beforehand, uh, best of luck at the Olympics. And I, I hope you, you have a lot of great experiences over there. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's always, it's always fun. All right. This has been the Huskies Hockey Insider Podcast. I'm Mick Hatton from the Rink Live. Please check out all of our great content, and we'll catch up with you guys next week.